Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Sherrard Show. I'm your host, Sherrard. Hope you're having a wonderful, beautiful Saturday evening or Saturday afternoon, wherever you are. Today, we have a very special episode, ladies and gentlemen. We have a world-renowned DJ that has stopped by the Sherrard Show, ladies and gentlemen. He's going to talk about his illustrious career, the things he's accomplished, and how he is using his music to change the world. The Sherrard Show is brought to you by Essence Television. Essence Television is the network for The Sherrard Show, where you can see the greatest interviews of your life, such as Lionel Richie, the Isley Brothers. You can see DJ Private Ryan, ladies and gentlemen, as well as Mel Carter and many more on The Sherrard Show. Just uh, add Essence Television to your Roku, or as well as your smart device. Just look at it on your monitor. Make sure you get the spelling correctly, and you can watch the live episodes. And it's also brought to you by iHeartRadio, ladies and gentlemen. You, if you ever miss the broadcast of the Sherrard Show, you can also listen to it on iHeartRadio. Just check it out, add it to your smart device, as well as on your Roku. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this man has been around for many years. He has touched lives all over the world. He actually has a cult following, ladies and gentlemen. If you just look at your monitor, it seems like all of the islands in the Caribbean listens to just the DJ Private Ryan. I'm so honored to have him on the show. And we're going to talk about him as well as Soka Starter. What's that all about? Welcome, Mr. DJ Private Ryan. How are you, sir? I'm good. I'm good. How are you going? I'm doing good. Thanks for stopping by the Sherrard Show for a moment. Um, DJ Private Ryan, I want to ask you one question and jump right into it. You are doing a charity benefit, always doing things, um, giving back. Tell us a little bit about tonight's event that you're hosting. Yeah, so tonight, it's, I'm actually not hosting it, but I'm part of it. Um, you know, you know, the past few weeks, you know, uh, especially around the world, you know, dealing with a lot of the gender-based violence that has been occurring. Um, tonight they're doing an art event um, that is raising funds, so they're auctioning off some some paintings. Um, so my good friend, that's why I'm actually she's a dentist. I'm actually in her office right now, and they're auctioning off some paintings to to, to raise uh, money for gender-based awareness. And I'm also going to be doing something really special throughout this year as well too to raise awareness to these things as well too as a person who um, worked alongside Scotia Bank recently with their campaign, and also you know as a person who works very closely with women. Like I work with my mother, my sister. Um, a lot of the people who are around me, you know, they're women, so I wanted to bring light to these causes as well, too. So, so Private Ryan, how in the world did you become so world-renowned with your phenomenal music? Everybody in the Caribbean, everybody in the States all over is talking about Mr. Private Ryan. Tell us a little bit about your journey this Saturday evening. Um, well, you know, I've been playing music from, from a very young age, from like, since I think I can remember just having, you know, a cognitive kind of idea of what music was. Um, I was always fiddling around with it. So I used to play around with my, my dad's record collection, um, you know, taught myself to DJ actually. So, you know, you know, just giving you the cliff notes of it, but uh, I taught myself to DJ, uh, you know, at a young age, like around 15, 16 years old, I was already, you know, playing in clubs and, and doing the radio. And then I went away to college and I started while studying in college. I did the college circuit as well to doing certain events um, or, you know, Miami, Atlanta, New York, uh, playing at college universities. While there, what happened is, is I created a podcast uh, and I pre created the podcast to, to, to educate people about music. So it was actually twofold. It was, it was, to educate people about music that I was exposed to while outside, as well as introducing people that were the outside to the music that I come from, which is soca, dancehall, um, this Caribbean culture, while also highlighting my ability as a DJ from the Caribbean to be versatile. So while I'm able to play Caribbean music, I was also able to play uh, other genres. So I was doing hip hop, I played on South Beach, I, you know, I did all the mansion and some other clubs, um, playing house and, and, and those things. Uh, you know, uh, subsequent to that, I, 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 I started, you know, when I graduated, I, I, I made the decision that I wanted to, to really, you know, go on the tour circuit as a DJ. And then a couple of years later, um, because I named all the podcasts different things, I gave them each different personalities, one of which was Soka Brainwash. 
um, Soka brainwash was always meant to be uh, 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 the Bible, the Soka Bible mix that, you know, went before you come to Trinidad Carnival, which takes place in, in February or March, uh, depending on where Ash Wednesday is on the calendar, because it's always a celebration before um, the Lenten season for the Roman Catholics. Um, and it's actually rooted in, in state, which is a whole other thing. Um, I wanted to educate people on, on what soca music came out that year that excited everyone. Because when you were away before internet radio, before there was YouTube, before there was social media, people didn't have a one source to get music. Um, so I created this mix and in 2014, I turned it into an event, which I wanted to make a festival type event. And, you know, seven years later, Soka Brainwash is, I would say, um, if not the number one, one of the top Soka festivals in the world um, where people will travel and, and it, it, you know, it sells out very well and people get to come and experience Soka music in its, its form. And um, as well, you know, I, I you know, entered into the world of production. So I've made, you know, hits like Feel Love, um, for Freetown Collective, X Games for Tennis and John, um, worked with Kess Reason to Love this year, did House of Calypso with Ruth and Alves and other various artists in a mission to, to take the sound of the Caribbean and make it even more expansive and inclusive and global and really push the boundaries. So that, that is the cliff notes of, of, my, of my career. <laughs> but apparently it's been very successful. You said you started in 2014 and seven years later, it's really boomed into something you never anticipated. So where do you look to take it from here? Um, well, well, COVID kind of paused where we were going next, but, but it was actually a great thing because it's given me a chance to really sit down, evaluate, plan, plot. Um, I want to position Soka Brainwash in a, in, a, in a way where it is a recognized festival that people who travel anywhere in the world to, um, expanding it to different countries, um, taking the, our culture and, and, and Soka. Is, 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 in, is not just Trinidad, Soka is many other islands and their interpretations of it as well too. And I wanted to make sure that, um, and I want to make sure that Soka Brainwash continues its growth and goes in a direction where it is a worldwide recognized festival, much like in the like, names of Tomorrowland, Ultra Music Festival, Glastonbury, and a lot of major festivals around the world. You know, it's amazing, um, um, Private Ryan, it's, it's apparent that a lot of times people, when they get big as you are, their music is just music to make money, to be able to continue their exposure. But you seem to have a mission behind your music. Is that correct? Yes, music is a mission. And I, um, I, 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 am, I am one that is, uh, I want to, you know, to really spread our music and make it get out there and, and create a song that you know could be identifiable. Not that we don't have it now, but you know, just using my creativity and putting my input in terms of how it could sound and the possibilities, and using the reach that I've, I've, I've acquired over time, just from touring and pulling together pieces of the Caribbean that probably haven't been done before in terms of like collaborations and sound and all these things. Now, um, many people help me educate people tonight on this, Private Ryan. Tell us everybody, everybody, and those who are watching tonight. Um, in the States and all across the world, what does the Caribbean consist of? What islands does it consist of when you're speaking about Caribbean tonight? Um, the Caribbean consists of, uh, you know, many islands, you know, so Trinidad and Tobago is one of the southernmost islands. Um, um, there is Barbados, Antigua. Well, people know about Barbados and Jamaica mostly um, because of their ambassadors, uh, you know, you see in Bolt and Bob Marley being icons of Jamaica. Um, and then, of course, the, the major star of Barbados is Rihanna. And, you know, it being a, a very uh, tourist destination, you know, people don't, uh, always recognize those two. But the Caribbean consists of many islands, um, Antigua, um, the, the French Caribbean, so Martinique, Guadeloupe, um, St. Martin, Dominica, Guyana, which is in South America, um, um, Jamaica, as I mentioned before, Turks and Caicos, Bahamas. So like you get a lot, a lot of the Caribbean culture is, and, and each island has its own identifiable personality and, 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 re, and, and, and the way they speak, the way they, they um, the, the everyday life is, the way the music is. Um, so it's like, you can visit every island and have a different experience, but it's still one Caribbean. Mm. Um, so, so I'd encourage anybody to go and, and some are known for their beaches, some are known for their forests, you know, uh, uh, some of the children are known for their carnival and so like every, everything is just a, a melting pot. 
uh, well, you know, different cultures. Well, you know, what's, what's interesting, though, um, Private Ryan, is that you seem to be the face of Trinidad. When people mention Trinidad, uh, people speak about Private Ryan. So it leads mm -hmm. me to ask the question, is the name Private Ryan come from the movie? Um, it, it, a derivative of it, yes. Uh, going back to the story about my, my rise to, 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 to becoming known back as a teenager, what happened is that in a, in a commercial one day, they had a, a, a DJ who referenced me as the number one recruit. He said, this young DJ, he's the number one recruit. He's Private Ryan, right? And that was around the time of the movie being popular. So the, the Private Ryan is, is basically an explanation of being the number one recruit DJ. And, and, and that is why people recruit the private. Every time you need a party, you have to recruit him. That's, that's, that's <laughs> We've learned something, ladies and gentlemen. We've certainly learned something where the name has derived from. Now, with being a DJ and being as popular as you are and world renowned, do you have to sign with a with a uh, um, a record label or any kind of um, entity, or are you doing all this independent? I'm doing it all independently, so I'm not part of a record label. As a matter of fact, I intend to to form my own um, where because of the productions and stuff that I'm on, I'm doing. You know, I can I can actually curate uh, you know my own my own entertainment, um, you know, and artists, events, um, DJs, and a lot of different things because you know I have experience in 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 in, in basically putting together these things across the Caribbean. You know, myself and my team work very hard to do it. So I've been doing it independently for 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 you know since inception. You know, it's, it's impressive, ladies and gentlemen, you can see what's running on the monitor, his songs. One of the coolest ones I saw that I like, I'm a big fan of um, of disco and Saturday Night Fever. <laughs> and if you look in your monitor, there was one where it started off with the Saturday Night Fever theme and it went into your sound and your music. It was beautiful. Tell me your inspiration yes. behind that. Are you an old school person like me, an old soul that loves old music? I love school. I love old school music. I love 90s r and I love old school hip hop. I, I, I love the sound and, and the spirit that went into it. It was actually uh, a, a very unique time where, where they made music um, from the heart. And it wasn't about, you know, social media or gimmicks. It was really about putting together like, like music with feeling, meaning, lyric, lyrics, musicality. And so I try to implement those things into, into the music in terms of having messages and doing those things as well. And um, as you mentioned, the Soka Brainwash, you know, Soka Brainwash is a themed event. So every year in Trinidad, we change the theme. So people don't come to the same event every year. They actually come to a different event every single time that we do it. It's, it's totally different. So the stage will look different, the decor is different, the people dress different. So it's a new experience and it's always fun and, and refreshing to be there. You know, um, the carnival now, are you going to have the carnival this year in the midst of the COVID? Well, carnival was supposed to be in February. Um, we're actually in the Latin season now. So, so you know, we're approaching Easter, so carnival would have been done anyway. So the question, actually, the better question is, are we having carnival in Trinidad in 2022? Um, that question is yet to be answered because we don't know uh, what the regulations are going to be. We don't know how far along we're going to be with vaccinations. Uh, these are the things that we need to answer. Um, we don't have those answers yet. You know, um, my wife is from Jamaica, so she's an Islander, and I learned so much from the culture, and I have my best friend. He's watching tonight. Mm -hmm. He's from Belize. And the adage is that you all don't need a reason to throw a party in the islands. Is that correct? No, no, no. We, ah. we really don't. <laughs> <laughs> we really don't uh, you know, it, it's been, it's been a, a year of, of us not being able to do that, though. So Trinidadians, you know, they, they have their small gatherings. Um, you know, some people go on boats during the weekend. You know, some people would have the oil go to restaurants or, or, or these things, but nothing major like what we're accustomed to where you can bar hop and, 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 and have carnival, which invites a lot of people from around the world, you know, millions of people come down and they, they, they party with us. Uh, we can't, we haven't been able to do that for a year and some months now. So, you know, it's still ongoing, you know, just up to today, our prime minister, you know, reminded us that even though it's going to be Easter weekend, we need to be very cautious because we don't want to reverse the progress that we've made because Trinidad has been doing very well with controlling the COVID cases. You know, um, being a DJ has greatly changed. Um, I know back when I was growing up, DJing was with records. You know, they would be scratching mm -hmm. and had a turntables. I learned on like records. That. I'm sorry? I learned on records. That's how I learned how to play. 
and then it, and then it grew it navigated to podcasts. I'm not I'm sorry, not podcasts, but iPods. They would do it off of iPods and things like that. The CDs. CDs. And, oh, well, I'm jumping it. CDs, then yeah. podcasts and everything. But if you go back even further, um, then that used to be DJing off of eight track. Okay, ladies and gentlemen. Yes. But the point is that where are you now? Are you liking it better as being with the records? Or are you liking it with the with the CDs podcast? How are you liking it um, being a premier DJ in, a, in all of the world? Um, coming from the era of turntables and, 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 and vinyl, there's nothing, there's a feeling that cannot be recreated with the technology that exists now. So when you when you were playing on vinyl, which is the, the records, you could you would have to search for your songs manually and your mind would work in a certain way where there was no playlist. There was, you need to like go through and, and search and find it and pull it and manually mix and, and, and like, you know, the needle could skip. You know, you could, you, 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 all these, these things that made it exciting and the sound of vinyl was very warm and, 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 and bass like because vinyl is processed different to like, let's say a wave on every three, so it's sounding different. But, on the other end, the development of technology such as Serato and these interfaces that can emulate the feeling of vinyl, the feeling because you can use the turntable still based on the way the technology is at. You can use uh, uh, um, CD players as well too, and you can also use controllers. You know, you know that doesn't really determine a great DJ. The the thing is, is that the, the technology allows for a lot more creativity because of what we can do now still having the, the technical form of the DJ, but then implementing new technology. So being able to jump instantly to parts of the song and being able to, to, to manipulate it in certain ways with effects and those things which didn't exist before. So I, I see that I, I, I like it better now because you, it's married the two worlds. It's married the, the future with the past so that we're not, we're not disconnected from where it came from. We still are able to, to replicate it in any way because it's just a freedom of expression which is where we're at now ladies and gentlemen we're talking to the iconic dj private ryan who's taking out a moment this saturday evening to be on the sherrard show to talk about how he's changing his life and changing lives with his music we will take your questions in a couple minutes um we hope that you will be able to join us and enjoy this interview with this man he's so young he's a baby face but he's an icon all over the world. Now, my question to you, though, um, Private Ryan, is when it becomes, now being a DJ, you oftentimes hear people say, well, I don't take that much talent to be one because they're not using records. Is that a truism or no? No, um, DJing is an art form. So I think people take it for granted what DJing is. A DJ is, is a person who can shift time in, 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 in like, he can shift time or, or landscape. And I say that to say, that the DJ has the power literally to change everything with an event. And your selection is one of them, right? So the right moment, the right song can literally lift or change your mood or drop it. So you're an energy shifter basically. And that can't be taken for granted because the story of the event is lies in the hands. Like people can forgive, you know, maybe bad bar service, um, they can forgive little things, but a bad DJ can literally take a, an event down uh, mm. in a way that's unrecoverable because the DJ just not is able to connect with the people. Um, the technical, the thing is with, 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 with DJs is that also the science of it is that we're, we're thinking in the future. So a DJ isn't just thinking about the song he's about to play, but he's supposed to think about four or five songs down the line because he knows where he's trying to take the patron uh, in terms of the journey. So when you're playing one song and you get that response, the DJ should already have in his mind, okay, so I'm gonna, I've gotten them here, so where am I gonna take them next? And sometimes you know that you like, if you're playing for long sets, especially an hour, two hours, three hours, four hours, or if you're in a wedding DJ, you know that you have to go in waves and, and that is a talent. So like your musical knowledge, your technical, your selection, your delivery, if you're somebody who speaks on the microphone and there are different types of DJs. So there's not a one type of good DJ. There are different types of good DJs. Some are better on the radio. Some are club DJs. Some, some are good wedding DJs. Some are good mixtape DJs. Some are all of them, you know? So, so there, there's so much to speak about in terms of good DJing and, and, and you know, it's an art form. And um, the ones who were really respect it, no matter how old they get, they always remain good DJs. A good DJ remains a good DJ once they have the love for it. 
you know, I've seen, I've never seen any DJs being so magical as what I've seen you do. Um, again, the coat following, ladies, look at your monitor. For all the people flood through the gates to hear Mr. DJ Private Ryan, that's absolutely incredible. You have, there's a song um, that, it, it, they even use it on Grand Theft Auto, um, Vice City. Um, mm -hmm. And that song was called Last Night a DJ Saved My Life. Mm -hmm. you, you know that song. It's song, of course. But it's a truism, right? Because apparently you touch lives in ways that many times you're probably not even aware of. Is that correct? Um, it, it, I would agree with that because, you know, people come up to me, um, just it's funny you said that because just, just this week, somebody sent a gift to turn out for me, you know, someone I've never met in my life. And what they said to me is that they were going through a very hard time. Um, they were going through a, a bad divorce and a very dark place with COVID. And I would, be, I would go live and I would play music and I would be doing the mixes. And they said, listen, you literally took me through a, a, a period in my life that was very dark and depressing. And I really wanted to send my appreciation. And, I, you know, I, I, I was able to find the person and, and message them back. And I get messages like that sometimes. And it's, it's actually something that inspires me and actually keeps me going um, in terms of changing people's lives. So it's not just about the mixes and events, but now through the music and even doing things like this, being able to talk to people and... You know, the slowdown was good because, you know, usually I'll be on a plane, you know, today I might have been, you know, on a plane somewhere right now, just trying to get back home. And, you know, now it's given me the opportunity to speak and do things and look today, you know, do charity and, and other things as well, too. That's beautiful. Now, now, Private Ryan, um, you were mentioning just a second ago about how you're probably on a plane if it wasn't for the COVID and traveling. Mm -hmm. So you um, cover events all over the world? Yes. And how would one be able to reach out to you once the COVID is over if they want to make a request for you to play? Um, you can send it to DJ Private Ryan at Gmail. I'll just use my, because I'm, I'm in the process of, of, of migrating the, the website email. So I, I don't want to say it that that's not there yet. But um, DJ Private Ryan at Gmail, you can message me. You can also find me on Instagram. Everything DJ Private Ryan, so Facebook, Instagram, um, you know, email, Gmail, everything. So you can just reach out to me and I'll be able to, 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 to respond. Or the team will be able to respond to you. All right, ladies and gentlemen, he's very busy. We're going to take a couple of your questions and then we're going to get him out of here because he has a very busy night. We really appreciate him. This question is from Madeline. She's from Virginia mm -hmm. Beach. Her question is, first of all, congratulations. You are an awesome DJ. Um, you've been doing it for so year, many years. We love what you do. Keep up what you're doing. Her question is, what is the greatest thing about your job and what is the worst thing? The greatest thing about my job is the people. Um, I have made and met some very, very, very amazing people across the world over my career. Um, it's, a, it's a luxury that... that um a lot of people don't get because some people you know they, they have their jobs they, they stay stationary they're in the country that they live um and they don't get to travel but every time i travel i meet i meet amazing people i've made great friends and it's something that is a part of the job that i actually i think miss the most in terms of interacting and being able to live in an alternate reality you know and, and you know on, on a weekend i could be here in Trinidad and then i could be in new york or i could be in atlanta i could be in barbados i could be in london and this, the cultures are so different um, that, 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 you know, it's interesting to see how everyone lives in different, like, like mindsets across the world. And it's something that is really amazing. The worst part about it is that because you're so busy, because of that, it comes at a sacrifice of, let's say, a, person, a, a very steady personal life. So when I'm traveling, I don't, let's say, for example, get to see like my parents as much, you know, and they, they, they're aging. So you want to keep that in mind because, you know, you're missing, you're missing, you know, spending valuable time with them or you, you don't get to, 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 to see your, your friends at home or you don't get to get downtime. You sometimes it comes to the sacrifice of even your health because, you know, you, you, you're not sleeping as much. You're jumping on planes. Um, I tend to sometimes get anxious on planes too just because, you know, that's happened over the years too. So like these, these are the things that, that, that are, are the, the, the downsides of the job, um, but there, there are plenty of upsides as well too. So, you know, you know, that's just life. Life is about, you know, the, 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 the light and the dark sometimes. That's life. Beautiful, man. And we thank you for your question. Um, this question is from Charles. This is from Charles. Mm -hmm. He is from Dallas, Texas. He said, I'm a huge, huge fan. Thank you, Sherrard, for having him on the show. Well, thank you, Private Ryan, for being on the show. His question is, are you planning on putting your travels and your experience in a book? 
I actually might, you know, I think I, I've been thinking about actually um, documenting and, and showcasing a lot of the things. I think a lot of people don't really, um, haven't really understood, you know, the journey, you know, and uh, that I've gone through to get to this point. Some people just see you, you know, here and they will see the Soka Brimosh and they'll see, you know, all the success, but they don't see the work that went into getting to, to where you're at and all the sacrifices that you've made to get there. Um, and so I would, I think I, I would, um, I, I, you know, document it and put it together in a book one day. I really do think I will. Appreciate that. Last question. Uh, we'll give one last question. We appreciate all you all's questions, but we'll take one last question. And this is from Trelina. This is from Trelina. She is from Chicago. She's saying, awesome, awesome job. She loves your music. She loves your coat following, which I agree as well. Her question is, um, have you been to Chicago and do you plan on coming back to Chicago when the COVID is over? Um, I haven't been to Chicago yet, but I, I would love to. Um, when COVID is over, you know, I, I intend to visit a lot of the places that I haven't been to yet. Um, so so I'm, I'm open to it. You know, once once we can make it happen, we'll, we'll make it happen. That's we appreciate, not, that's no problem. We appreciate all you all's questions. Um, now, Private Ryan, where can people reach out to you if they have any more questions? They can still do DJ Private Ryan on Instagram. Yeah, Facebook. DJ Private Ryan Gmail, you know, send me a message, you know, send me a message on Instagram, you know, um, um, Facebook, everything, but Instagram might be the best way because you know, like, you know, I interact a lot more on that platform right now. So you can just send me a message if you have any, like one more, one or two more questions. I can take them if you, if you like. Okay, very good. All right, very good. All right, this question, this question is from. Oh, good. This is from Lawanda. This is from Lawanda. She is in Utah. She says you mm -hmm. do such a fascinating job. She loves as well the 1976 Saturday Night Fever thing. I love it too <laughs> as well, Lawanda. Her question is, is it hard maintaining your number one spot in this industry? Um, with success, that is always the hardest part. So, so, so getting there is one thing. Staying on top is another. There is always, and this is not just about music, but in life, once you reach a certain point and you reach at the top, there will be people who will, who will A, not be happy with your success and will, will, will come for you. B, they have people who study your success and they will come for you as well. Um, and then there's always the rise of the youth and the rise of the youth will always, it's, it's a natural progression in terms of what's next. You know, when people get accustomed to one thing, you know, there's a point where, where the succession is and they will always look for the next big thing. So for me, you know, in, in terms of that, um, staying on top means also staying sharp and also reinventing yourself. And, and which is why like, you know, you are like always pushing myself to, to, to have, you know, great events, great experiences, keep sharp with your DJing, you know, put my heart into my productions, which I'm proud of um, in terms of putting out great music. So, you know, it's, it's a lot, but yes, it is. It is difficult. I don't. I, I don't even look at ranking. You know, I just do me and um, try to do the best I can, and then hope people love it and receive it the way that I put love into it. Very good. Very good. Appreciate your question, Luanda. Or one more question. This is from Shirley. This is from Shirley from Houston, Texas. Mm -hmm. Shirley says you're awesome, and you look like you're barely out of college. I agree. As a baby face, Shirley. <laughs> but her question. Her question is: Was this what you were planning on doing? when you started out or what would you be doing if you weren't DJ? Very good question. Um, if I, I, with me, you know, I just went with my heart and, and my spirit and where it was flowing. And so I always knew that music would be a part of me forever because I, I just love it. I love music. I love, I love DJing. I genuinely love making people happy. So I think I would have, I would have been involved in music in some way anyway, but if I was not an international DJ, I do think I would be involved in marketing because I love being creative. I love coming up with concepts. I love, I love putting together things and making people feel a certain way. So that would be, that would be one of the things I, I definitely think I'd be involved in some sort of creative industry for sure. Well, very good question. We really appreciate you all's questions. I got a, I got a good one for you um, okay. for myself, um, Private Ryan. Now, what is it? Is it, is it tougher? What do you think? Is it tougher being a DJ in the islands or being in the States? Now, what I mean by um, financially being able to make it as a DJ, do you think it's mm -hmm. tougher in the islands or in the States? Financially, um, both are competitive because every, every, everywhere has, every, the Caribbean has a lot of talented DJs and so does the US. So it's not, it's not like, um, it's just a level playing field. It's just that, 
in terms of, like, let me see, financially, if you are the top tier of DJing in, 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 in the US, you have the ability to make, earn more than in, let's say, the Caribbean, I guess. Because when you look at, um, and I wouldn't just say US, but like in the world, you look at, at some of the house DJs, you look at like Tiesto, Afrojack, um, um, you know, a lot of the people who are DJ Khaled, a lot of them are in the upper tier of earnings because, you know, you know, the way that it's dollar for dollar, they're able to make thousands of dollars off, off of things um, that they do. But in terms of even our, uh, in terms of our top DJs, we're nowhere near that because, you know, with the US exchange is different. So it's obviously more advantageous to become a top tier in the US than it is in the Caribbean. However, if you are able to position yourself as a, as a great DJ or, 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 or artist or whatever throughout the Caribbean, you know, once they appreciate you and what you do, they will, they will, they will book you to come and, and, and entertain them. They will appreciate you and then your value stays, you know, up there so that you can make a living off of it. So, you know, there are ways to do it. And then there are other ways as well, you know, like by tapping into corporate is sponsorship, you know, you know, making sure that you position yourself in a way where the corporate entities look at you and they look at you as a viable brand that they could, um, you can go on and, and, and make a, a reasonable living off of it as well too. You know, it's it's interesting, um, Private Ryan, you know, that you're very, very talented, very gifted at what you do. So you earn every dollar that you've earned um, by being a DJ. But many times there's people who aren't that talented, whether it's not even just in DJ, it's just in music and in modeling and whatever, but they got a lot of followers. They have so many followers, they have so many hits on their page and they get signed. So you take an older gentleman like me, who it, it makes me shake my head because I'm thinking, wait a minute, it, it was all about talent before, but now it's just all mm -hmm. about numbers. Is that something that you see? Oh, as well? Is that a trend you see and notice as well? Most definitely, uh, we live we live in a, in an illusion right now. Social media, first of all, is not real. What social media is is a representation of what someone chooses to portray on social media. So, for example, some people who portray they're in a happy relationship, sometimes they're in the most happy relationship. A lot of sometimes they're you preach yeah. preacher, <laughs> right? Sometimes the girl who's taking the the, the pretty photo. Uh, they, they, they took probably 100 or 150 photos just to find that right one because they're very insecure in real life. That is what social media is. Social media, in a, a lot of the cases that you realize, is, is not um, a realistic representation of, of, re of life. Um, so when it comes to talent, uh, a lot of companies and, and what sells in terms of looks is the optics. And so a lot of people are, are going towards optics because they're also, what social media was able to do is tap into human insecurity. So when you, when you have people who are followers, sometimes it's because they do things that are viral or they, they position themselves in, to get the likes because the likes is what makes money. That's what numbers come. That's what, what people are looking at right now. With that being said, um, that has created a cycle of, of some people who are, are getting a lot of attention that are outshadowing the people with real talent. And it's not to say that, it, you know, this is always the case, but it does exist. Um, so for the people like you who are looking at that, you can see it because you see, well, what is, you know, this person is, is obviously not as talented as, let's say, maybe this guitarist is singing or this DJ. But the, you know, but this other person is just doing the things that like maybe make people laugh, or they do things that you know is controversial, and, and these these that's the world we live in. But we have to accept it that we're at now, and you know we can't complain about it. We need to adapt and then survive. We really appreciate you stopping by the show, uh, DJ Private Ryan, uh, um, the no iconic problem. DJ who's doing big things. Um, uh, again, follow him. His information is on Instagram as well as um, Facebook. It's showing on your monitor. Support him. Um, the world has been supporting him. And when the COVID is over, I'm sure he will be coming to a city near you. What are your final thoughts, Mr. Private? Oh, no, this was wonderful. Um, I, I always like to share um, information experiences um, and just look out for a lot more from me. Like I'm always trying to push your boundaries. Um, you return of Soka Brainwash, whenever that is, God willing, um, it, will be, it will be grand because we're planning it um, to really welcome the world again. Um, look out for my, my, my merch line, which I have a battalion merch line, which is going to be coming out as well too. So I'm going to be having that battalion music, which is the musical outfit that is going to have all my productions 
that is also going to be coming on stream as well too. So I'm really excited for the new journey of, of, of DJ Private Ryan in terms of how I can introduce you know, myself and my culture and my extension, the artists and a lot of people around me to, to, to take it to the world, Nazi mission. That's pretty awesome. Well, I'll tell you, Private Ryan, when the COVID is over, I'm going to come to Trinidad or wherever you are, and I'm going to show the world how bad I can't dance. But I'm going to be <laughs> supporting okay. what you do. So we really appreciate that and start, and for being on the Sherrard Show. And on tomorrow's episode of the Sherrard Show, we have one actor from Tyler Perry. He's going to be on the show. And then we have a professional as well who's going to be stopping by giving his wisdom Two professionals, one mission on the Sherrod Show. You don't want to miss this. In the meantime, enjoy the rest of your Saturday. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye now. Thank you for joining us on this episode of the Sherrod Show. If you like additional information about our episodes, you can log on to thesherrodshow.com. You can also check us out on social media, like us on Facebook, look at our YouTube videos, subscribe to our newsletter at Essence television networks at gmail.com if you would like to get information to the host sherrard you can email him at the once again thank you for joining us and we'll see you next week